What's going on, all you Tokyo news writers out there? Your two favorite TV reviewers are back today, and we're finally back here to review the terrific HBO Max series. The second season, we reviewed the first couple episodes, or the first episode maybe a few weeks back, um, and now the series, uh, this season, I should say, is wrapped up. We don't know if this is the end of the show yet or not, or if it's going to continue. Hopefully, it continues on, but we're talking about the entire second season of Tokyo Vice Free. And that's right. We are talking about the entire second season. We're back here. And what a phenomenal se season this was from start to finish. They really wrapped up a lot of the storylines that they left, you know, kind of hanging out there from the first season. It really started and kicked off right from where the first season ended with Jake and Katagiri working together, Ken Watanabe and Ansel Elgort working together as a team. They were phenomenal together. I loved their relationship in the show, you know, depending on each other to bring down this, you know, crime syndicate here in Tokyo. And, you know, with all the problems they had finding the evidence and linking, uh, you know, the the Yakuza group to this political uh, cause that was happening, this uh, political leader going into power. They were trying to link, you know, Tozawa, who is basically in control now. He was looking to get political influence with, with the uh, this uh, a guy that was going to go into power, basically, he, it would make him the most powerful Yakuza, basically untouchable. Well, they needed to link him uh, to this and they needed to come up with some proof and they'd had trouble all along the way. You know, things would go down. They'd get a witness and they'd end up murdered, of course. So a very difficult proposition to take down um, Tazawa. But, uh, you know, over these episodes in this season, that's what it was really going for. You had Tazawa also um, sleeping with a mistress that, uh, you know, basically Jake's girlfriend from the show, some someone that uh, he had fell, fallen in love with. And it just so happened to be Tazawa's mistress at the same time. And Tazawa was using her once he found out that she was in basically, you know, sleeping with Jake. You know, he found that out. Um, so it was a very difficult proposition to take down Tazawa and it was going to take everything and it was going to take Samantha, who we remember from the first season, um, obviously running this uh, club um, and, you know, her having a relationship with Sato uh, really came into play, too. It, it was going to take all these people working together, basically, to take down Tazawa, who is the most dangerous person around. You know, he was ruthless. He would stop at nothing. And he was the kind of kind of guy that would come in and just murder a family and not think twice about it. He'd, he'd do anything to gain power and control over the Yakuza's in Tokyo. Why does Tozawa look like he coached a hockey team in the 90s? <laughs> <laughs> like it's stuck back there. Right. Like, yeah, he was a really good bad guy, you know, as you were stating, you know, this has to do yes. with crime syndicate and politics, you know, stuff we're dealing with here in America. It's happening around the globe. Um, pretty accurate to, there you go. Oyumi oh, Tanida is his name. Was, was yes. he uh, the, the Mighty Ducks rivalry? <laughs> to, <laughs> the crime and politics and things we're dealing with here. And of course, Jake and Kajiri, you know, working on this, trying to find evidence and trying to take down these bad guys. And of course, one by one, people start getting picked off. And what I liked about this season, season two, a little more than one, I thought the stakes were a lot higher. Like time was of the essence. They needed to get the story mm -hmm. out. And, you know, each time they're they're trying to get the information, you know, they hit a roadblock. And, um, you know, the big bad guy, you think he dies and we find out he comes back and they're trying to figure out how that all worked out. Like, I thought he was dead. Like, how did he come back to life? So that was part part of the story here was really interesting. But Sato was probably my favorite character. I liked his arc the best. Having to do with him being involved with this, you know, bad guys and bringing in his brother and controlling his younger brother, you know, innocent kid. He's like a computer nerd and. They bring him into this world, and it was towards the end. There's this whole scene in the shower, a bunch of naked guys, but really badass scene with Sato. And I just love what they did with this character and a great arc. Yeah, it was like Sato and his brother had come back, and his brother was just the biggest piece of shit, evil person you can think of, and was basically trying to take the father's place. You know, the father, uh, you know, obviously injured and, you know, on the, on the edge of, uh, you know, life. 
uh, just clinging on to life. And somebody else is going to have to fill the power vacuum left behind by him. And it was either going to be Sato or his brother. Well, his brother came in and was ruthless and was, you know, doing all this crazy stuff, killing people and, you know, was trying to lead through fear. Whereas Sato, you know, used his head and was trying to do things like his father would have done things. And, you know, that led to some explosive moments between the two brothers. And finally, yeah, like you mentioned in that shower scene, it finally came head to head. That was amazing. And seeing Sato rise into this, this role this season was amazing too, especially coming off the first season where he was kind of young and dumb and making mistakes and pissing off the Oyabun, his father. Um, so he, you know, had a lot of room to grow this season and he did. And, and by the end, um, he was able to rise to power and it was awesome to see. He was my favorite character as well, other than Jake and Jake had a phenomenal year this year too, working for the Macho, the big newspaper. And also the Macho itself was, uh, you know, threatened by Tozawa. You know, if they released certain information and made him look bad, he would basically, you know, had so much power that, he had somebody working within the organization. So one of the people that was writing there with Jake and, you know, involved in uh, getting the news out was under Tozawa's control. So basically they couldn't print anything to make Tozawa look bad, you know, otherwise it would cause bloodshed. So really yeah. the stakes couldn't have been higher. There was so much at stake this season. And I really enjoyed the episode where Jake finally went back home. He went back to the States and visited his family and you see his relationship with his father, his father, very proud of him. Um, but you can see there that, you know, at first proud of he is as Jake, he kind of wants him back in the States and back in their life. You know, he kind of feels that he kind of left and, you know, there's so much going on. They could use him back, back home. But, uh, you know, through the episode, you see that uh, you can tell that he understands how important Jake is and how he needs to to go back and work. he's working on this story that he can't talk about too much, but he can see that it's, you know, really super important. And Jake has to say goodbye to the family too, and go back and, you know, tie up all the loose ends. And that's basically where the second season wraps up there. They're able to take down Tazawa and it was phenomenal. The episodes were crafted great. The last half of the season, especially, it just was nonstop action and intrigue. And you never know who was going to, you know, succumb to the evil of Tazawa. And what a great season. And I'll be sad if this is the end, but it was a great couple seasons and a show that uh, seems to get a lot of uh, views, but I don't know. It doesn't get the press it, that it deserves. I feel like not enough people are talking about it. And we've been trying to get the word out on this show since the beginning. And the second season was even better than the first. Yeah. I don't see anybody talking about this. I see no reviews about this. We check movie news every day and nobody's talking about this. It's I don't get it. Incredible series, well-crafted characters uh, based off the, you know, books of in person, Jake Edelstein and his, adventures and things came across in japan right in for this newspaper and all the crime syndicate and bad people throughout the show and just season two even better than the first i thought you know just a lot more was on the line trying to find answers and just bad things happening left and right and the last half of se season two was just nonstop action and just keeping it on the edge of your seat i really loved it i loved how we got some closure on some of these characters, how it ended for Tozawa's character, which was really phenomenal in the final episode of season two. And, you know, really trying to figure out what's going to happen next. You know, they could end this. They could go another season where Jake maybe goes back to the States and writes for, you know, New York Times and what he gets involved with the crime there. Sato being my favorite. I loved his arc, his family in this. Of course, Rachel Keller playing Samantha is a big part of this. Really the standout here is, you know, Angela Elgort and Ken Watanabe. Cool setting for a TV series like this. Crime drama had like a noir feel to it at the same time. And yeah, Angela Elgort gets better and better each performance, I, you know, TV show or movie I see him in. So I'm looking forward to see where his future and career goes. So that being said, I'm going to give Tokyo Vice Season 2, it's streaming on Max. Max. I'm going to give it a 4 out of 5. Ken Watanabe hair pieces. Ken Watanabe was great. This season especially, he really got to do investigative work. And the episode where he was trying to find out how that hit happened, like when the motorcycle drove by and was able to shoot into the window there, he kind of figured out what happened. He put the pieces together to see that the person in back kind of knew that that was going to happen. So he ducked and the bullet came in there and that's how the person was killed. Otherwise it wouldn't have made sense. So he was able to do investigative work and, you know, his family was constantly 
uh, under the threat of Tazawa too. He had to move him around all the time. So it really highlights the fact that all these people are living day to day, knowing that at any time, one of their family members could be killed or, you know, somebody that they love could be taken from them. So the show had everything um, about it. Everything that you mentioned that we love about this show, it's phenomenal. These two seasons of television were a great, it's another great, you know, HBO original show, you know, something that HBO is known to do, put out these great original series. And this, this one stands up above the best of them. And second season, I liked it even better than the first. So with that being said, I'm going to give season two of Tokyo Vice. I'm going to give it a four and a half out of five Sato Zippo pieces. I want to hear from you guys out there. What did you like about Tokyo Vice season two? What didn't you like about it? What's your favorite season? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to stay subscribe also check out these wild rascals on facebook x and instagram and a website cinefellas.com for the latest greatest tv movie news and reviews thank you so much for watching our review of the second season of tokyo vice we hope to be back to review the third season hopefully next year but until then i'm uncle henry sato and i'm uncle logan watsonabi signing out until the next tv review cheers, cheers. <laughs>